Good evening, guys, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming over. Um, this is my first live of 2021, so hopefully everything's going to go swimmingly. Um, I have a very special airworm tonight, other than Wayne and Mark. They're always special, as you know, because if not, I'm Mark, I'll moan. <laughs> so we have Mark, the general woodturner, Wayne, the woodturner, and also Martin Sabian Smith has popped in to say hi. So welcome, hi, Mark. Everybody. Thank Hi you everybody. Hi everyone. So tonight, because we got the the colour wizard in the house, <laughs> thought, we better be, thought we better do a bit of colouring. So I have a piece of sycamore here, um, just under twelve inches across. No, well, eleven inches. The hey, oh yeah, put you in the background. There see that's go. what you got. See that's what you got to do, Martin. Because if not, I forget. I get carried away. <laughs> so a piece of sycamore, um, just over 11 inches across by two and a quarter inches. Real inches so, or man inches? No, these are real inches because my tape said, Mr. Stanley said. So basically going to turn a shallow bowl and uh, we're going to give it some pretty colours on the bottom. Maybe a bit of texturing as well, but I don't know how this will take texturing because it's not it's not a hard hardwood, so we'll see what happens. So I'll smooth out the bottom, get my centre in for my mortars, and then the guys will go through the chat and welcome you lovely people in. Right. As usual, from the participants list that's provided by YouTube, we've got, in alphabetical order, Andy H is returning, Barry's Wood Creations, Barry's Wood Turning, Ben Jamin, Brent Beecroft, Brian at Hartwood Turning, Chris Glanville, Christina Michael Hesseltine, Circular Wood by Keith, Douglas Mungham, Four King Owls, Filed Coast Wood Turning, Simon, uh, Gerard, Hodgepodge Woodworks, I Love Wood Turning, Adam, Jason Wheeler, Jennifer Stroughton, the real Jennifer Stroughton. Hello, Jennifer. Good evening, Jennifer. Joe Sr. Hi, Joe. Nice to see you. John S, Lawrence Bugaja, Mick Jews, Mike Hugh, Hobby Wood Turner, Mr. Stacey Smith, Neil Gold, Nick Castle, Priestown Wood Turning with Holtan Moore, Robert Nye, Robbie Uchbo, Stuart Ingrill, the Mini Maker, that's my nephew. Hi Marley, nice to see you, mate. TJ Turning, that's Terry Bray, Turnage Dubois, which is Daniel. Ivy Woodshed, uh, Wood Wizardry by Colin, and Wood Turning by Brandstrup. That's well, the list yeah. that YouTube have given me. If I've missed anybody, do power to joys. Can I just say congratulations to Jennifer? I think she won the um, the lead on the um, in the in the raffle. Oh, well done, Jennifer. The, Taylor, the Taylor's Murfield raffle. Yeah. Oh, wow. congratulations! Yeah. Well Congratulations. Done. The other thing is today, we've got to wish Wayne a happy birthday. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday, Wayne. Thank you. 21 again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For 21. <laughs> <laughs> 21 with 40 years experience. <laughs> In fact, 46 years experience oh. after 21. <laughs> You're never that old, are you, Wayne? I am. Yes, I'm afraid to say. Yeah. Wow. 60, 67 it was to do. <laughs> you smooth talker, Martin. <laughs> no, sorry, Wayne, was that 57? <laughs> Lord, I wish, Martin, I wish. Oh, right, okay. Oh, oh, no, I genuinely didn't hear properly. <laughs> no, no, it was uh, 67. 67? Wow. Yeah, he's just had a hard life, Martin. I was going to say, you're, you're, you're looking good on it, Wayne. Excuse me. <laughs> they, say, they, they say red wine keeps you young. <laughs> Hodgepodge has said he's half the age of Drilly. That's probably right. Uh, <laughs> uh, Wayne has a drill that he uses for power sanding, Martin. It's older than the pyramids. <laughs> It's actually the real star of his shows. 
He just doesn't like to admit it. I, have, I don't think I've seen it. It's only about 10 year old. It's got its own merch and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it actually has. Karen Browning's just joined. Hi, Karen. Neil Gould's in. Hi, Neil. Hi, Neil. Hi, Neil. And Gary Lapisio's in. Oh, Good Nigel evening. Laura. Hi, Nigel. So that'll be Nigel and Alison, I would imagine. Good evening. Do, 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 do. So it looks like Steve's just put the recess in the bottom of that piece. I have. What chuck are you using, Steve? It's the record SC4. Is it SC4? Yeah, the SC4. Two inch drills on it? Yeah, 50 mil. Cool. The only trouble is all these tools are in a different place now. So I keep going into the wrong place. <laughs> all right, so. You have to change and things. Oh, I know. Let's try and get some shape on here. Just put it on. I do notice you're using your new Simon Hope tools, though. Yeah, well, I better. I don't know. I guess not you'll only moan at me. Yeah. <clears throat> Martin be glad that I've actually started to use proper tools and not carbides. <laughs> don't, 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 don't start a discussion on that. Not tonight. Priest Town Wood Tony, no, it's a piece of sycamore, mate. I ooh. Wayne and Mark, check, check our private chat a second. Okay. I'll wait until the lathe stops. Just stop the lathe a sec, Steve. What's that? Steve, stop, stop the lathe a minute. No, we, nothing's wrong. Yeah, no, I don't think no, no. no. No, that's don't out. you? No, don't even. <laughs> Leave that out. Is it? Yeah. I said sycamore on it. This is Keith gave me this. He said sycamore on it. <laughs> that, that, that's Ash or Elite Mark's hat. Okay, I'll believe you. I don't. I don't know, mate. I haven't got a clue. I'm only a carpenter. I don't even got a clue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's not a piece of sycamore. It's a piece of ash. Keith said it's ash. <laughs> hey. <laughs> he said in the chat, it's a piece of Keith, ash. it's got your writing on it. It's got sycamore on it. It's got your writing on it. Eh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, That's it. Kick him out. Well, Kick Keith out. Well, well spotted. <laughs> I'd like to say a little hello to um, Stuart Ingeriel and Gary Letizia on the island of Guernsey. Nice evening. to see you guys in this evening. Oh, by the way, Steve, we've got 91 in. Really? That's because Martin's here. That's yeah. not because of me. <laughs> so anyway, Good we're going to turn a... Just come in. So anyway, we're going to turn a piece of ash tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, don't try and put any texture on it. He says you can't believe everything he writes. <laughs> That's a nice looking cut, Steve. Good gouges, those crown cryos. So what are you saying? They're better than the Robert Sorby ones? I can't say. I've never used a Robert Sorby tool. The only thing I don't like about these is all oh, the crud gets stuck in. Just watch out, watch out. Troublemakers in the house. Phil Bolt is in. Yeah, <laughs> Phil's just come in. Hey, um, <laughs> we're, watch we're watching Stand you, by. Phil. Stand by your beds. Careful, Phil, because Martin's got a spanner. He's a moderator now. He can ban you if he wants to. <laughs> but yes, Phil, I am behaving myself. I, I, I'm being a good boy because I'm a special guest. <laughs> Pete from Twisted Trees is in. Hi, Pete. Hi, Pete. Evening, Pete. 
Ben Jamin, yes, I hold my breath all the time on those cuts. Oh, Tom Parker's just come in. Evening, Tom. Georgie Ann Burdette, who I think's over in the States. Hi, Georgie Ann. Yeah, she is. That's a pretty bit of wood, yeah, isn't it? Yes, yeah, Nigel or Am, it is. Uh, Crown Cryo, double ended, Simon Hope, half inch bowl gouge. With a long handle. <laughs> not, not the God. medium handle. It's my point and early contribution to the wood turning world. Advising Steve to get the right handles. Hmm. Yeah, blackmail. You've done over 100, Steve. 101 in. Oh, Yuppie's just come in. Evening, Yuppie. All right, Chappie. Hi, hey, Yuppie. Wolf Alley. Oh, very Martin, good. Do you wanna... Go on, sorry, man. Do you want to no, put no, your no. link in? Do you want to put your link in for the competition you run them? Yeah, I can do. Um, yeah, for those of you in um, in the UK, thanks for that, um, Steve, and for obviously having me on uh, this evening. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much um, for coming on. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, let's do it. Let's do a mutual pat on the back or a virtual pat on the back. Well done. Well done. <laughs> bravo, bravo. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so some of you may have seen um, the other day um, that um, my my main business, obviously, as I'm sure you all know, Hampshire Sheen and my other business, the Wood Turning Shop, um, have teamed together to put together a massive um, UK lockdown giveaway that includes one of everything that Hampshire Sheen produces, um, a Simon Hope um, sanding kit, all of the sanding discs, a Les Thorn 3.8 spindle gouge, two DVDs, spray caps, and a box of um, mixed blanks. Um, for one lucky UK, uh, one, one lucky UK winner. The draw is next Friday night. Sorry, Steve. Um, at seven o'clock. Oh, that'll be right. You, you, you don't start till seven forty-five, do you? No. No, that's all right then. Um, yeah. So we'll we'll be done and dusted by the time you get started. Um, so if you head over to um, the website we're just putting in chat. Thanks for dropping that in as well, Mark. That's all right. I have to keep um, my title as the king of the links, see? That's <laughs> what he pays me for. Oh, wait, no, he doesn't. Pay? <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that lockdown is open to anybody in England, Scotland and Wales for logistical reasons um, and financial reasons to do with shipping, blah, 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 blah. Um, but all of the information is there at thewoodtoningshop.com forward slash lockdown. I've got to say, I entered yesterday. Thank you, Mark. I will, I will keep my fingers crossed for you. You do I mean, realize if I'll keep fingers crossed for everybody, obviously, because I don't want to show yes. any favoritism. Exactly. I was, <laughs> I was going to say, say, if he won it now, they'd be like, hang on a minute, they did say. <laughs> yeah. All right. Got a little bit of a hump in there, we'll try and get rid of. Yeah, don't want any humps. Yeah, don't want no humps. Ian in the shed's asking, can you join the Fingers Club if it wasn't caused by the lathe? Oh, technicalities now. Were you doing something that was going to go on the lathe? Did you have to go to hospital? And was it on camera? So those are the like conditions, really, for Fingers Club. When I was a photographer years ago, um in the master photographers association i met a guy can't remember his name um but a fairly tall scrawny looking guy, big long beard and he he won the documentary prize in that particular i think it was 2000 2001 he won the documentary prize um of a um a set of photos showing a story and the, the story he photographed was when he had a heart attack. 
Oh, wow. And he he had a heart attack, and he took on a floor somewhere or other, and he took photographs throughout the entire time. He was conscious throughout the entire time. And when the the ambulance arrived, he photographed them arriving to look after him, and he took pictures in the ambulance and took pictures in the hospital and stuff. And it was a fantastic set of pictures. So um, although he didn't hurt his fingers or anything, I think he, he, could have, uh, he could have made his own club up because of that. Yeah, I think that would kind of qualify. Uh, question from Hobby Turner. Has the blank got the tree branch center going across it? If so, will that cause any problems after yes, it's been the, turned? The pith is in there, just at the top. There. Yeah. And there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little it's bit of work. It. You can see it's actually starting to crack out there. Phil Bolter says, Martin, have you noticed have you noticed how clean the floor is? Not a trace of sanding sealer. <laughs> yeah. he, he must, have it, must have covered it with shaving. <laughs> Paul Covenant's just come in. Hi, Paul. Um, oh, Ben Jamin's just asking me if he wins. Can I get Les Thorne to sign each item? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, ben, I'll get him to sign his stuff. You obviously don't want me to sign the Hampshire Sheen. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you don't put it back on eBay and sell it, Ben. <laughs> Are you feeling the love, Martin? Are you feeling the love? Oh yeah, yeah, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, when, I, when, I, when I went over to Kansas City, I had to sign, I had to sign some tins for the Mississippi Wood Turners Club. They sent two people up to buy some Hampshire Sheen, so long as it was signed. <laughs> <laughs> Phil says, uh, Les can't write properly. Yeah, Lawrence, well, hey, Martin, do you sell products outside the UK? Um, Lawrence Bugaya, Bugaya, I'm not sure where you are. Um, where Whereabouts in the world are you, Lawrence? If you could um, just drop a little note in the chat to say where in the world you are, I'll see if I can get some to you. Oh. Brent Beecroft, if an offshore person was to win and offered to prepay the shipping, um, sorry, Brent, nice try, but we, I, I can't, I, I can't go, I can't go with that. I'm afraid the shipping would be unimaginably high. Um, for something like that. Ah, oh, Lawrence, you are in Malta. Right, if you... Um, it might be worth having a look at Costas in Greece. Um, I'm not shipping... Personally, from the wood-turning shop, we're not shipping into the EU at the moment whilst the nightmare of Brexit is still underway or, or, or still sorting itself out, rather. So we're not shipping to... Um, Europe just at the moment, but we will be able to, or we will be back um, when everything gets sorted and settled down. But in the meantime, if you look at um, Costas, oh, I can't remember his surname, that's not very good. Costas, 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 that's right. Um, bear with me a minute. Oh, there we go. I'm going to put a little link in the chat for you. Um, here it is. Uh, he He's in uh, Kefalonia. He may be able to get some stuff for you over to you quicker. Um, but just going back to Brent, really sorry, but I can't. Um, I, I can't go with that. I'm afraid. Um, I'll have to. I'll have to see if I can arrange something with uh, one or more of the overseas distributors. Um, Brent, if you have a UK mainland shipping address and you should win, yes, I will. I can ship it to that address. But it is worth remembering that the majority of the Hampshire Sheen products are classed as dangerous goods. So onwards shipping will require specific paperwork and specific training. There you go. There's a question Neil there from Neil Gould. 
Yeah, yeah. when using Hampshire Sheen Danish oil, do you use the sanding sealer first or before first before applying the oil? Neil, no. Um, it did, oh, well, no, that, that's, that's not a very good answer, actually. Neil, the best thing to do is think about what you're making. If you're making... Um, if, if you're making something for contact with food, just use the oil. Don't use any sealer with food safe with food contact products at all. Keep the finishes as quick and as simple as you possibly possibly can. So just use the Danish oil. However, if you are coloring and are coloring something, then you what I personally do is I sand it first, then color it, then I will use the oil let that cure completely for at least 24 hours and then seal and finish. That's the way that, that I do it. But most of um, um, the, the, the food contact items keep the finish simple. Don't use any sealer, just use the oil. There you go. Cornish mates joined. Hi, Cornish. If um, Georgian's asking what brand of sander are you using, Steve? It's a Simon Hope inertia. Is it inertia sander? Inertia sander, yeah. Inertia, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, that's the Simon Hope Pro sander with the new style handle on. One of which we're giving away in the Wood Tony Shop giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> nice segue. The man's a pro. <laughs> he Look is. It. Give him an inch, he take a mile. <laughs> you said I could plug it, Steve. <laughs> as much as you like, mate. <laughs> I've given you the link you gave me. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> uh, pardon. <laughs> That's something <laughs> Phil would say. No, let's get as many people over as we can. Mm. And while you're over there, just go in the shop and buy something as well. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I forgot to mention for those for anybody who does enter they um, they will receive a discount code just for entering the just for entering the giveaway oh i wish i'd known that <laughs> <laughs> right. so this is standing up to 400 oh Hodge, Hodge woodworks as an american what would you say is the best hampshire sheen product to try since i'm unable to win them all uh, hodgepodge, it's definitely, definitely got to be the gloss finishing wax. Yes. I would say. Definitely. And yeah, read I the instructions on the side of the tin. Yep. Make sure you use some sealer with it too. And I'd so. say this, I'll say this with absolute sincerity, and not just because he's here, because I've said it in every live I've ever done. Hampshire Which Sheen High Gloss. Hampshire Sheen High Gloss is my go-to absolute favorite finish. That's very kind of you, Mark. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's good. It's good product. That's my my standard finishing regime is Yorkshire grit, Hampshire high gloss. Simple as. Cool. It, 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 it is a great product. What's he saying? What was that, Wayne? I say I found an original tin of the high gloss uh, wax the other day, uh, Martin. What with the with the yellow label? You were the yellow label, no batch number on. Wow. Well, I mean, that, that's one of the ones that I made myself. Yes, it is. Yeah. And uh, I'm also at um, the, um, oh, is it the, the, um, the black wax, the original black, black wax you brought out as well. No Blimey pressure, that. Steve, but you've got uh, three masters of colour watching you tonight. Oh, really? Of Martin in Wayne and now Stuart Farini's in the chat. <laughs> no pressure then. Hi, Stuart. Hi, Stuart. Sure, it's just seeing what he's got to live up to when he comes on next time. <laughs> so Phil's put in Martin Lake company <laughs> as much as he likes to give them. He told me this week I have reached a level of incompetence he has never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you call boosting your employees? <laughs> no, the, 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 the Phil is really, really very good. He's one of these types of people who sets a low standard and fails to achieve it. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Right, so clean the grain with some meths. Yeah, it's all right. Stuart says, hi, guys. He's waiting for the colour. 
<laughs> um, Tom Tango Parker's asking if the giveaway is only on the 15th. Yeah, Tom, head over to the website now. You can enter until midday on the 15th. The entries close on the 15th at midday and the draw is at 7 o'clock that evening. Um, Ian in the shed. Yes, I am, but I'm very, very, very behind with it. I've got about four months to catch up on, I think, maybe five. Phil says, apparently, he's not totally useless. <laughs> I could be used as a bad example. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, you, Phil, you flatter yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to big Phil up here. Phil, Phil Bolter is by far <laughs> one of the nicest guys I have ever met. And it's almost a pleasure to have him work for Hampshire Sheen. Um, <laughs> almost, almost a pleasure. <laughs> yeah. you, could, you just couldn't do it, could you, Martin? <laughs> it, it, there, was the, it, there was nearly a compliment in there. <laughs> yeah, it, it's all right, everybody. Phil knows I mean it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I do need to big Phil up a little bit. Phil recently had, has worked incredibly hard on getting himself um, onto, I, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's an advanced motorcycle course and qualification. Right so he can yeah. travel, travel, do, around, travel around the south. Do, road 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 road. Yeah, so he, he, Phil yeah, riding around needed, the yeah, Phil needed the uh, the advanced course so he could do the blood bikes. Yeah, yeah. So he he's uh, he's done that. He's sorted that, and he's been delivering PPE um, recently to hospitals around the south, which is an amazing well thing to do. So yes, well sir. done, Phil, and thank you very much. Well done, Phil. Bless you, mate. You're a star. So, what are we going to do with this thing, guys? Oh, I don't know. I think it looks quite nice. I wouldn't colour that. Oh, oh, I knew it! I knew it! <laughs> I, seem, I seem to remember. I seem to remember Stuart saying something like that yeah, too. Deja vu, this is. Yes, he's always about to say that. Steve, touch of deja vu there. <laughs> um, there is. I'd like to colour on the darker bits. What on these bits? And what bits? You're not pointing at anything. Can you see that darker bit? Yep. Yeah, I put a light on on um, on those bits, and if you f if you follow that line down, what here? Follow that line down with your finger. So so where you've got that thing that looks almost like a dog bone from pith to pith, yep. and the dark and the, the sort of the darker bit running between the two, I'd probably put a lighter color on there and then blend it with the same darker color on either side. That's probably what I would do. Right, so you're saying darker colour on there, darker colour, and then there a lighter colour through the middle there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's what. That's what I do. The only the only concern I've got is I'll put this on overhead. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Is no, not that one. This one. Is we have a bit there where the the actual are starting to split out. And I don't know if that's going to cause us an issue when I turn the middle out, but we'll find out, I suppose. Yeah. I don't really want to put super glue in there because uh, that's not going to colour properly if I put glue in there. Like, like that's yeah. the Robert, only issue you can worry about. Just, said, uh, just uh, colour the rim when you turn it over. Just colour the rim. Mm. Um, when you start doing no. the inside, colour the rim. That's what uh, Hodgepodge just said. Right, okay. No, I want to do the bottom, really. I think. Steve said bottom. <laughs> So, yeah, would, yeah, Nick's not here tonight. I think she's asleep. Um, so what do you reckon? Like a, a burnt orange or a, a flame red there, then like a honey blended into the red? Uh, if you want, if you want to go reds, so I'd probably use flame, flame on the dark a bit and um, ruby either side. Right, okay, All right, let's go for it. So, flame. Right, I'll be back in a couple of minutes, guys. I'm just going to top my glass up. Well, that pint glass is empty already. Yeah, but it's, it's a pint, it's pint glass. Of gin. It, it takes a bit of getting through. <laughs> and, uh, Steve, it's a drip. <laughs> <laughs> right, so flame through the middle. So obviously we're using Hampshire Sheen, intrinsic colours. 
be a bit bad if I use chestnut, wouldn't it? Other colours are available. If you want, if you want to use chestnut, you go ahead. No, don't be daft, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, not there. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> he's on the Phil, he's he's on the gin tonight. It's his birthday. Never mind. I've had so much coffee today. I'm absolutely Oh, that explains fine. it. <laughs> mm. We've got a kettle in the workshop now. Oh, that's fatal. Should never oh, have a kettle in the workshop. Oh, it's terrible. After you've after we've sieved out the shavings, the coffee's all right. <laughs> Bit of fibre to it. I've got one of those yeah. Tassimo coffee machines. They're, they're stopped forever, forever going backwards and forwards. I know, it's a nightmare. No wonder I don't. I had so much sleep over Christmas, and I've completely undone it this week because I drink so much coffee. I'm up till like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Door 60's joined. Hi, Door 60. Good evening. Hello. There was, um, there was a, uh, Lucy Young has ju just joined as well. That's a name I'm not familiar with. Good evening, Lucy. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Welcome Lucy. along. Thanks to all the new guys coming over tonight. There's a lot of new names in the chat. Appreciate you all coming over. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe to Steve as well. Yeah, if you like what Steve does, like and subscribe. He's here every Friday night. Every Sunday lunchtime, he does a live as well with his gorgeous and under underrated wife. Underrated. Hard put upon, underrated <laughs> and hard put upon she is. <laughs> she told me I had to say that. Steve. Oh, no. Yes, mate. Uh, just, ju just feather the edges on the top there a little bit. On here? Yeah, just feather the edges upwards a little bit. That's better. So you don't have a straight line? Can we do that bit as well? Or is that all right? That looks good, Steve. Paul's in as well. Tom, we'll miss him. Tom Tango, that. try that one, mate. So, Ruby, next. Andrew Mortem is in. Hi, Andrew, from Washington State, USA. Well, hello, Hi, Andrew. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, I'm, I'm going to have to slip this one in. Phil Phil Bolter says, I will say that every morning when I work, Martin brings me a hot, fresh cup of coffee as soon as I arrive, just before he locks me in for the day. <laughs> <laughs> Do you let him out for his lunch? Then? As well, I, I, Smith. I, I, let out, I let him out for his lunch and uh, comfort breaks. <laughs> comfort breaks. <laughs> With a coffee. With a coffee. <laughs> that looks good. That looks good, Steve. I'm liking that. Question there for you, Wayne from Douglas Mungham. Oh, Mister. Have you seen the advert for the wine glass that is connected to a bottle stopper, and you can drink like the bottle is a glass? <laughs> That's a good idea. We'll be straight on that. Uh, Steve, I've got a little challenge for you. On him. Right. Um, leave the ruby where you've got it at the moment. Yeah. Put three squirts of ruby on the towel. Yeah. And half a squirt of black. Right, okay. 104 watching. Okay. So... Put the black on top of the ruby. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter, but yeah. So one, two, three. Oh. Black's clogged. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Boy, could use the earth. Uh, Hi, Chris. Chris G. Chris Amp Glanville's in. How are you doing, mate? So do the rest of this or do your over the top? Yeah, just do the rest of it. Just make sure you blend it in real nice. There you go. And that'll just give hey, you Chris. a little bit. That'll just give you an, an extra an extra shade there. Just 
Gerard the French Turner, bonjour. Good evening. 109 in. Oh, Mark, don't, 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 don't. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Just need a little bit. Just see the grain coming through there. That's 113. Have you put, um, how, how many coats of colour have you put on? Just one at the moment. Just one. So we'll draw that off. I, I don't mean to, I, I don't mean to um Go on, no, go for it. Tell no, him. No, no, no. Martin, that's this is why people come uh, over to yeah. see. Yeah, dry it off a little bit and then and then put a second coat on. And uh, Steve, you've got embellishing waxes, haven't you? I have, yes. Oh. So, is that dry? That's dry. So, same process, go over it with the light one first? Yeah, yeah, try, try and go over it like for like. Right, okay. Tell me, Steve, which embellishing waxes do you have? Well, I don't know. Well, hang on, let me just have a look. Um... <laughs> 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 You could also use gilt cream. Yeah, I've got some of that. But we're using embellishing waxes. Yo, Barry's here. Evening, Barry. Evening, Barris. Hi, Barry. Hi, Baz. Oh, Stuart. Hey, Hi, Stuart. Nice to see you, Stuart. Seth from Brickhouse Craftworks is in. Hi, Seth. Bonjour, Barry. <laughs> Has Gerard the French Turner said that he may be French, but he actually lives in Ireland? <laughs> <laughs> Steve, oh, Barry's, Barry's got a question. Oh, here we go. If I said about my logo. <laughs> no, it's, it's his new one. Bernie, Bernie. <laughs> no, not Bernie Bernie. Pod, Pod is asking, is it best to use intrinsic colours with a paper towel or are there other alternative applicators there that work better? You can use anything you like, HodgePodge. Um, I've been playing with um, an airbrush over the last couple of days. Um, yeah. They work out of the bottle with an airbrush. Um, I don't they wait? Tell you the truth, I prefer using an airbrush when I'm using intrinsics. See, it's funny, I prefer using a towel. It's interesting, isn't it? I think if you want sharp lines. I've just ordered an airbrush so I can use an airbrush with the intrinsics. You can, straight out of the bottle. Cool. Um, but I've seen people use, uh, what are they called? Sea sponges and... Yeah. yeah. Um, what else? Um, yeah, paper towel. Um, the, the little <laughs> things you go through. Um, what are they called? Straws. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it, 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 it's like a, it, it, it works on the same principle as an airbrush. That's what uh, Jeff uses. Jeff Hornham, that's what he uses. Yeah, I can't remember what they're called. No, me neither. It's like it's like a poor man's airbrush. Yeah. <laughs> um it's a it's a disperse I, I can't remember what they're called, but anyway, you, you get a little bit of colour on it, then you blow through it like an airbrush and it's quite precise and stuff like that. They're um they're quite good. Wood yeah, ninjas, wood turn in sin. Hi, wood ninja. Hi, ninja. So Barry's asking, Steve, will you be finishing the bottom with a two pound coin? <laughs> <laughs> never say never, Barry. <laughs> I've used those um, painter's sponges. You know the little square sponge on a stick. I've used those oh, yeah. with your, your intrinsic before. That yeah. works well. Yeah, so really, HodgePodge, you can use anything you want. Trial and error. Hmm. 
Do you want me to do the back middle black? Phil says, I like the subtlety of a six inch paintbrush. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to find what that thingy's called. Siphon. Now you've got a sucker siphon. That's what she said. <laughs> um, right. Um, Adrian's I'll put be... in, it's called, it's called an artist mouth atomizer. Atomizer, that's right. Yep, and that's uh, just you just used one that um, that you kissed when he was doing his masterclass. Yep, that's right. So, do you think I should do the center black? Um, trail. No, I don't think so. Not feeling black in the middle. <coughs> Andrew is asking: Is there much order with these dyes? Can they be applied indoors? Or do they need good ventilation? No, they are water-based, Andrew. Um, no, well you, can use them, you can use them indoors, no problem whatsoever. I do all the time, and I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wayne, yeah. what's in? Evening, Wayne. Evening, Valerie. Hi, Wayne and Val. Hi, Valerie. Um, right, Steve. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, three squirts of ruby, one squirt of black. Or earth. Earth. Well, you said you got a blocked a block nozzle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, soak it in uh, meths. Oh, okay. Oh, Jamie, well. Jamie Page is in the house. Hi, Jamie. Hi, JP. Good evening, Jamie. Hi, so, JP. We going with this ruby and earth, Martin? Yeah, three squirts of ruby, one of earth. In where? In the middle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, hell first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that'll give it a really dark, but not quite black. Thank you, Wim. JP, yes, it is me. It is Martin SS JP. Good to see you, mate. Right, okay. I'll give that a little dry off as well, Steve. <clears throat> Brian at Hotwood turning. Hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. Yay, yeah, nay. Looks good. Nice. Yep. That earth there just sort of brings it out. <laughs> it's almost like Martin knows. It's almost like Martin knows what he's talking about, really, doesn't it? Right. Yeah. GP, GP has just given you a two pound super chat, Steve, and said, "Finally, a real turner on SK Craft's channel." <laughs> yeah, I know. I've, I've I've tried to get on for weeks, GP. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. See what a hassle I have to put up with. Yeah, that's no, nice. <laughs> See, you don't but get yeah. none of this grief, do you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do. I do, but I, I don't have earworms to point out all the grief that's being thrown my way. Um, right, okay. Oh, you you've got to tell it there, it <laughs> <laughs> thank you, JP. You should have done, but thank you. Right, Steve, so some, you've got so. Have you got some paper towel there? I have. Okay, right. Grab uh, grab a couple of sheets of paper towel or one, yep. whichever. Um, fold it up into a nice thick pad. Uh, and again, that'll do. Right. Uh, spin the lathe up and then burnish the bur burnish the surface. Just and that'll that'll just help to de nib the colours a little bit. Oh, Mark's internet's just crashed. Was it? Oh no! Hello. 
That looks good, Steve. You can see a bit of a shine coming up there. Yeah, just see a sheen as I'm looking down it. Yep, lovely. Don't forget to do the foot and the recess. All right, Wood Ninjas just put in an acrylic or epoxy would look great in the middle. Well, then he wouldn't be up to mount it in the chuck though. Right, I've just got a little sheen on there. That's enough, isn't it? Yeah, that'll do. And now we're going to put on a single coat of sealer. <sighs> that looks really nice already. Got a nice sheen to it. It does. So I can use paper. I can use normal sand and so I ain't got to use aerosol, have I, on this? No, no, no. You can use anything you like. That's made the green pop. Yeah. Right. Adrian's just said uh, to Steve, Martin has betting going on around him. Uh, with the likelihood of him dropping something, not using the instructions he wrote for himself, and the number of times he says, oops. <laughs> Phil's just put, I've just seen the funniest thing on Facebook about homeschooling from Mike Walt. A sign that says, if you see my children locked outside today, mind your own business. We are having a fight. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, Mark's back. Didn't you want to stay, mate? Oh, I've had to come back in on my phone because my laptop's crashed. Oh, is it? No. Yeah. You put 50p in the meter. You'll be all right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, um, well, who, who was it that just said something in the chat? I've lost it. <laughs> Uh, TJ Turning says, can you furnish it with shavings? So, st yes, you can, TJ. So, Steve, grab a grab a heap of shavings off the floor. Plenty of them. Yeah, take your gloves off as well. Oh, yeah, good point. <laughs> Sorry. This is, no, this right. is no, no. Very, very Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That will do a really nice job of getting a little bit of heat into the piece and just to help that sanding sealer dry off a little bit and it will denib the surface at the same time. Ruby saying the colour looks quite nice. Oh, hello, Ruby. Hi, Ruby. Awesome, Steve. Great. Now, what embellishing wax are you going to put on there? Um, something to bring out the colour. I don't know. Let's have a look what I've got. Oh, look. Hampshire sheens and embellishing waxes. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I normally go for gold or silver, but I don't know if that'll work with them. With that. Um, gold will look nice, but so will bronze and black. Not at the same time. Bronze and black. Never tried two well, different colours. Bronze or black. Beg your oh, right. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, uh, Richard Ald um, asks, why take the gloves off? Um, Richard, it's just because when, you, when your hands are so close to the piece like that, um, if there's any friction with the gloves, there's a chance of the, of the glove melting um, and um, possibly catching your hand, that, that kind of thing. I think try bronze. What do you reckon? Bronze? Bronze will look really nice. But not as not. It won't be quite. It, bronze is a very, is, is a very very subtle color. Yeah. So although it come up absolutely gorgeous, it won't show up particularly well on the camera. Um, but black will really 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 pull that out. Pull, pull do you that think? Game do you think? Yeah, black will bring out the grain better, won't it? Um, it will, but it will all. It bear in mind that the, these embellishing waxes are incredibly fine. Um, and they will find every single little um, nook and cranny. Um, so I would probably go with the bronze. Right. Okay. If it was me, that's what I would do. Well, we'll go with the bronze. Actually, <laughs> that that's not entirely accurate. Knowing me, I would probably go with the black, but um, we'll the bronze would be very, very nice.
There's a question there for you, Martin, from TC Woodwork. Oh, yeah. Um, TC Woodwork says, Martin, you will often sand each coat of colour back and reapply. Um, but Steve hasn't tonight. What's the difference in the end result? OK, TC, that's a very good question. Um, I normally colour everything black first and then sand it back and then apply the colours over the top. That worked very, very well with um, highly figured woods like um, quilted maple, rippled sycamore, that kind of thing. Uh, what Steve has here tonight is is um, not particularly well figured. There is there is some figure in it, but it's just light and dark rather than that ripple or the, the wood with uh, any chatoyants in, uh, which is why we haven't gone with the sanded back um, with, with, with the sanded back process. Um, but the sanding back process you are referring to, TC, is is one of various different methods you can use to apply. Um, the hand machine colours or any colours to be fair and to be you know open about it evening cuz nice to see you in mate hi cuz hello um, Bobby Turner hello. do you still have the free advertising going on in front of the camera a certain wall unit or small drawers. Um, I don't quite understand what you mean there, Hobby Turner. Um, I am in a new workshop and there's no real place to put loads of stickers in front of cameras at the moment. Uh, Simon's asking, can you not do black and bronze? Um, you can um do two colors simultaneously but when it comes to the buffing stage that steve's going to be doing in a minute um when the colors buff up they have a tendency to um blend in with each other um ending up with um a mixture of colors really i don't know if you can if i change camera whether you can see that embellishing wax in there it's better from the other angle steve Just about see it in the green, can't you? Yeah, you can. It might be worth putting another coat on. I, I, I normally put two coats on. And also, with that little bit of um, that little bit of a crack up the top there, just by the pith, it'll also sit in there quite nicely. Yeah. Hundred and twenty in, Steve. Good deal. No pressure. Then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hi, James. So just, to, just, just to sorry, Mark. I was going to say, just to expand on my um, my answer to TC Woodworks question, uh, if you're if you're colouring a piece of essentially boring wood, as in there's there's no figure in it or anything like that, uh, try to keep try to stick to one or two colours and blend those together, and try not to artificially put any features into the wood um, because it. I find it never actually works particularly well trying to put an artificial feature in where there isn't a natural feature in the wood. So what we've done here with Steve is we've just gone with a three blend. Well, it's actually four, but they're all the same shade, just all just all blended together. So they're all very, very similar colours blended together, and we haven't tried to highlight anything in particular. All right, so buff this up. Uh, yep. Now don't put too much pressure on. You just need enough pressure just to pull the wax off the surface. Yes, you can. Wood wizardry by Colin. I would. I would try the gold with Wenge. Yeah. Is it Wenge or Wenge? <laughs> yeah, Wenge or Wenge, one of the two. Yeah, I'd probably try the gold or, or the silver. 
Or the bronze, actually. That would look nice. Probably not yeah. the hot <laughs> some some of the yeah because some of the green in in Wenge or Wenge or whatever it is uh, can look a bit bronzy as well. Yeah, it's it's that it's that kind of yellowy yellowy yeah. ready. <laughs> Go underneath a little bit more down. Tissue stuck to it. All right, so I think that big chunky bit there. Bobby Turner's just uh, explaining what he meant about the sticker, Martin. Oh, I mentioned the Draper unit behind you. Oh, yes, that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I remember now, Hobby Turner. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I will eventually put um, a, a sticker over the top of the Draper thing there. They, they, they haven't paid me to use it, so. <laughs> um, James Cassidy's just made a comment about the birthday. Yes, I have had a, had a great day, had a good live at lunchtime, and now I'm having a relaxing evening with a couple of few G&Ts. couple of few. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, that looks awesome. That, that, that's looking really nice, that, Steve. Subtle, but there. Yeah, you. Yeah, we can see it. You can see it on screen. It's so bright and shiny. You can yeah, really see the reflection of your light off it and the reflection of the lathe bed. Nice. Yeah. Douglas is asking, um, could you burn it, brush it, and then would there be enough texture to take the embellish and wax? Uh, oh. Yes, it would. Yeah, I did wear those. <laughs> that would that would look fabulous. Uh, quick, 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 where is it? Quick response to Ben Jamin. Uh, yeah, the first coat's always going to go on blotchy no matter what colors you use, but the subsequent coats even it out. But how do you get a light color without too many coats, i.e., one? Um, uh, Ben, if you want a lighter shade, then water it down, add a little bit of water to actually thin the color rather than try and make it lighter. Right, so are we putting a wax over this? Uh, I wouldn't. You wouldn't? No, I'd leave it as it is. Okay. You you, you could if you want to, but... I'd, the intro is wax, you get it in the grain, don't you? Yeah, you can do. Right, okay, let's leave it as... I might lacquer it, actually. When that's done, I might turn it upside down and lacquer it. GP, GP just said, whatever you do, Steve, you want to the bit better the leaves. Sorry, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you're referring to, though, Jake. I, I know what he's referring to as well. I remember the video. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't my fight moment. <laughs> I'll hold the bottom just in case, JP. So. Very nice, too. Got a nice shine to it. It does. Oh, I think they... Crack there, isn't it, Steve? Sorry, that is a hell of a crack there, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's not very deep, but I did glue it in because that was on part of the. I think one of the best recoveries you did, Martin, was the monkey puzzle. <laughs> what one I went to see and... Les to do? <laughs> you no, know, when you when you were turning it, and it was just an absolute nightmare. And you end, you ended up turning a goblet, I think, didn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, completely I'll, different. Yeah, I'll, I'll give up on that, and I went and um, did a goblet instead. Yeah. Then I went to see, um, I went to see um, Les Thorne in his old workshop before we before we uh, started our own business together, and he moved up here, um, and he showed me some amazing cuts to get it done, which is what we did. All right, let's get this hogged out. Yeah, Robert's asking, how thin are you planning on hollowing this one, Steve? Not very thin, because uh, I need to clean the front face off to get rid of that to start with. That's not very deep at all, but obviously in there it is, but I'm hoping. There's no cracks on the outside. The only thing that concerns me is where this – you can't really see it. Let me take it out. <clears throat> where this 
the pith is. There was a little bit of a, I don't know if it's a breakaway or whether that's where the grains just crumbled away or what, but we'll see when we get it turned out. We'll just have to be careful with it. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, as they say. Lots of comments regarding two pound coins. <laughs> oh, have you got the uh, depth gauge ready? Uh, yes, Mark. <laughs> We've got your depth gauge ready. JP Woodwork, thank you very much. I cried as well. That 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 turned that lack of peace turned out to be a commission for a for a well, in fact, it was a commission for a customer, and it took me another five days to finish it. Change the camera, Steve. Question from Douglas. Is that a cup shake? More like a ring shake, I think. Or a milkshake. Sorry, <laughs> that was dreadful. <laughs> that was, you've been hanging around Phil too long. <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's a couple of um, things in there, Neil Gould and Ted Weeks, and they're both colourblind. And um, they said that it, they, they find it hard to apply the second coat um, as because they're, they're colourblind. What I'd suggest to, to you two is to apply both coats of the same colour first. So if, you, if you're putting on, say, ruby, um, I've, I'm hazarding a guess that you're going to be colourblind between um well perhaps say, say red and green so the reds are, the reds and the oranges are going to look really 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 similar so if you're putting on say the ruby in the middle of the peak i would suggest putting the ruby on first as the first coat letting it dry or drying it and then put the second coat of ruby straight over the top of it so you know that the ruby's done and then move on to um another shade somewhere else so that should hopefully make it a little bit easier for you um uh, when it comes to coloring phil is not responding to any of the slurs because he's doing the ironing <laughs> Uh, Ted and Neil, you're very welcome. See what that cracks like. Oops, oh, it's almost gone. Easy peasy. Just be careful in the middle. Yes. Ted, red, green, brown, and blues. Oh, okay. Traffic lights are a problem, Ted. I can imagine, actually, Ted. Well, you see, Ted, the one, it's always the one at the top that tells you to stop, and the one at the bottom that tells you to go. <laughs> yeah. Debbie Beardall's in. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Hi Debbie. Debbie. Hi, Debbie. I 
says loose. <laughs> yeah, I think that bit in the centre is probably going to pull out now. No, oh, it's already right. gone. It's almost turned through it. Yeah, that's it. Get rid of that. Well, I went as bad as I thought it was going to be, actually. A smaller gouge, I think. <laughs> Somebody mentioned um, glasses you can get for colour blindness. And the glasses for colour blindness is great. One of the first things is you can see. In the chat, what have you guys who are watching got planned for this weekend in the workshops? Or I could rephrase that and say, what are you working on at the moment? Well, what I'm doing, I got a a, a new 15 button stream deck for oh. my birthday today, so I'll be setting that up with uh, some cool beans. Great time stream deck. I'm doing lots of uh, practice pieces for the virtual craft fair at the end of the month. Oh, uh, yeah, ja Jamie's organising that, isn't he? Yeah. Yep. 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 Rick is building his workshop. Stuart's doing a gnome. What's everybody else up to this weekend in their workshops? Clearing up. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> I've just got to, Steve, I've just got to drop out on my phone. I'm going to come back in on the laptop now. It's working again. All right, mate. Grand. Oh, Ben Jammin's yeah. making a skeleton clock. Yeah, two clocks. Ben. Two light holder. No, it's not just a high clock. Sharpening tools, wig stands. All right, I'm coming. All right, I'm coming. Calm down. <laughs> John can do a large textured wall clock, coloured with intrinsic colours. Chris Glanville's sharpening tools on the new Pro Edge. Where's my uh, depth gauge? Ryan is working on the clock challenge. Keep James the... Cassidy, I, I, I'm feeling sorry for James at the moment. J, J, James Cassidy's got a very poorly finger, and he's uh, standing in the workshop looking and wishing I could be turning. Mm, and I, I can just imagine him standing there looking at it longingly like some poor lost puppy. <laughs> right, Brian is uh, working on the clock challenge. He's not been working on the edge yet. He's figuring out what he needs to do. He's just looking through the, the virtual camera in the edge. 
you don't have to do any different downloads than uh, OBS is automatically got the virtual cam. And then when you go into Zoom, the camera that you choose is the virtual cam. And it yeah. should link in, should link in automatically. So long as you switch the virtual camera on in OBS, of course. Yeah, in OBS, yeah. yeah it does have that option now to switch the OBS cam to switch the virtual cam on. Oh look at that, it's broke it out. Oh no. It's loose. It's loose. Fiddlesticks. Right, if you glue that from the inside, Steve, mm -hmm. um, what I tend to do with using super glue, what I tend to do is put a, a spray of sand and sealer on first. Just in case, if you're finished cutting there, put a spray of sand and sealer on before you put the, um, the super glue in. That way, when you sand, you don't leave any marks from the super glue. Oh, okay. You can just see the colour bleeding through there as well. Oh, Cornish maid's leaving. Uh, Steve has been doing, having a relaxing time. Where is he? Relaxing after a week of school online teaching. So, medium super. See you later, Cornish. Thank you very much for coming over. Cornish and her partner, Chris, are only a few miles away from me down here. Have they got a track too? Yeah, everybody in Cornwall's got a tractor. <laughs> we all drive trackers down here. You, are. you might as well, because we whenever I come down, there's loads of them on the bloody road. We all drive <laughs> trackers, and we all, drink, we all drink cider, and we all eat pasties. Pasties. <laughs> Is that a sore point, Mark, by any chance? <laughs> Don't bother me, I'm not Cornish. I'm from Devon. <laughs> Can't believe that. A point which all my Cornish friends remind me of daily. <laughs> Do write me handsome. Says Cornish. <laughs> right. It's a proper video, isn't it? I feel like I hold it. I've been chatting away here for about the last three minutes and my microphone was muted. I think it's really, really rude. rude. I'm We're just ignoring Mark, you. <laughs> I've asked Mark the same question three times and he's ignored me, but my microphone is <laughs> muted. Try, try it again. I'll see if I can ignore you again. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mark, being from Devon, what is it? What, what goes on first? Is it jam or cream? Oh, don't, cream, no, 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 no. Cream first. <laughs> anything else. Sorry. Cream first, then jam. Anything else is wrong. I don't right. care what yeah, anyone the says. Only, the only thing that goes on scones is lots of butter. No, no, a proper scone. This, this is a proper scone. Lots of butter. The Cornish had their pasties, and we will give them that. They're quite good at pasties. But Devon cream teas, cream first, then jam. No argument. Isn't the, isn't the Cornish pasty actually a Devon invention? You know what you in Devon? Sorry, say that again. Didn't pasties um, uh, um, originate from Devon? No, they did originate from Cornwall. Did they? Oh, oh okay, yeah. Yeah. I'll give them that. It all depends on which part of the country you're from. Because each part of the country has their own version, which is the invented stuff. I, I fear for my life with questions like these. I'm living in Cornwall. I can't say anything else, but they came here first. People know <laughs> where I live. Oh, Cornish Pisky's real. <laughs> yes. Good, good answer. <laughs> Funny what else I can think of. 
Knockers. The knockers are real as well. But you don't know what knockers are. Um. Don't go there. They are a thing. In the Cornish tin mines. In the Cornish tin mines, when they went down right. and out under the sea, they the miners would listen yeah. for the knockers because the knockers are the stones up above rattling against the top of the, the mine shafts. And if you hear the really? knockers, you run because that means that the the uh, shaft is about to collapse. Good grief. Wow. Right. Robert Hodgepodge has said, we Americans have no idea what you're all talking about. <laughs> what we are talking about, right, we call them scones. The, the only equivalent I can think of over, over in America is biscuits. Biscuits, you yeah. Biscuits. That's about the only equivalent I can think of. Yeah, I think so. Steve? Yeah. Yes, How mate. deep is that? Yeah, go on. How, 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 how deep is it? What, the bowl? Yeah. Um. Oh, look. It's my depth gauge. Okay. I'll tell you. It's uh, 34 mil. And how wide is the blank? How wide is the blank? The blank is... Yeah, I'm, 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 11 I'm inches. Hand. How thick is it? Sorry. It was two and a quarter, but it's probably not now. It's... In millimetres. 47 mil. Oh, okay. that's, not that's not including the, the... Obviously, the thickness of the mortars in the bottom. That's to right. the base of the... Why okay. did you want me to... So your base is about 12 mil deep. Uh, let's have a look. No, I, I, I was just wondering if you had one more cut there. <laughs> oh, I, uh, so, so subject, Martin. So subject. I'm carrying on now. No, no, you, you carry on, Steve. He may not have any two pound coins. No, you, we, we can say one thing about Steve. He hasn't done a funnel this year yet. Hey, 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 hey. We ain't finished this job yet. <laughs> Let me just get a drill. That'd be easy with a drill. Boom. Cornish mate says, we crimp on the side of their pasties, not like they do in Devon, where they crimp on the top. Yeah, that's true. Oh, that's interesting. Devon pasties crimp across the top. Cornish crimp around the side. That's interesting. I think Brian, Brian from Hartwood said that they all copied the, the fourth of Brian. And jam it. Cut open a warm scone, add some cream, jam, and a Welsh cake in the middle. <laughs> Ooh, well, okay. <laughs> Barry. I'll tell you what I really miss. Ginsters aren't pasties, mate. I promise you. No, they're not proper pasties. They're only no. pasty by now. I'll tell you what no, I really, really, really miss. No. Lardy cake. When was the last yeah. time any had, had a lardy, lardy cake? Lardy cake. Oh, no, when they love it. It's been quite a while since I've had a lardy cake, man. Mm. They used to make a lardy cake at the uh, bakers around the village, but they don't do it anymore. Cornish mate says, no true Cornishman or woman would get a Ginsters. Absolutely true. I used to work for them, and I won't eat them, because I know what goes in them. <laughs> I used to work at their factory at Kellington. Uh, no, not for me, thank you. In, in where? Callington. Oh, right. No Since cats and dogs in that village then. Callington's <laughs> the, the depths of Cornwall. Yeah, no no. roadkill no road on the roads. <laughs> Same. Right, I want some St. Martin. Phil seems like the deal rather clear for me and him. Oh, I'll tell you what, Phil. I would, I, I, I would give you good money for a lardy cake. Two lardy cakes, actually, because my dad's a p passionate for it, too. So if you can bring them in on Monday, <laughs> that would be amazing. You might even get a warm cup of coffee before he locks you in. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, my, my dad and I absolutely love lardy cake. Sticky as anything. Sticks to your teeth. Yummy, yummy. Thank you, Phil. You're an absolute star. Oh, Phil, um, just talking shop for a while. The the tins that I ordered, um, they actually went back to Grimsby where they came from. So there's more coming tomorrow, which is a bit frustrating. That's true, Ben. I have had loads of jobs. I've only had two I ever really loved, though. But you don't tell you it was only each job for a week, though, Ben. I <laughs> <laughs> went against us for long. Oh, Caitlin's in. Hiya, Caitlin. How are you? Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Hi Caitlin. Caitlin. Uh, 122.40. James Cassidy says more butler's duties than Phil. It's all right. But part, part of Phil's um, employment package is, 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 a, is a regular supply of Jaffa cake. <laughs> And free Wi-Fi. <laughs> Mike Yu says, question to you Cornish folk. Does the train stop stop at Camborne on Wednesdays or is that just a Jethro joke? That's just a Jethro <laughs> joke. Jethro <laughs> joke. <laughs> Steve Fleming, it's um, Steve's asking. Go on, on. <laughs> okay, it's Ash. It's not Sycamore. <laughs> no. <Huh>? Sure. <laughs> very, very fast growing Sycamore. If it is. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Very, very pretty. Yeah, Phil, the Wi Fi is free, but it doesn't work in his in his shed. It's too far away. It's free when, a, it's free when I allow you in the shop, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> a lunch, if you're lucky. Which which is Phil's shed then, Martin? Um the um the long Hampshire Sheen shed. Oh, the old HQ. Sorry, Circular Wood by Keith is throwing a right spanner into the works now. He says, it's not ash, it's sweet chestnut. <laughs> I, I, I'd actually say that's more that's more like olive ash. <clears throat> it, it would have helped if the guy who sold Steve the blank actually labelled it correctly in the first place. So you come in there causing trouble, man. <laughs> you invited me, please. <laughs> Nigel Oram's got to go. See you later, Nigel. See you later, Nigel. Thanks for coming Nigel. over. And probably hey, Nigel. Out. Oh, he said he did mark it. He marked it SWC. That's what he marked it. Oh, he no, that had, S, that had SYC on it. So it's Steve's fault because he can't read properly. But yeah, he's from Norfolk. I'm from Norfolk, mate. We don't learn to read and write. We learn how to take tractors apart and turn wood. Well, no, well, I'm still trying that one, Martin. <laughs> So, so Keith, so Keith did label it correctly, but because of the quality of the internet picture, 
we all assumed it was ash. <laughs> the ash and sweet chestnut are very difficult to tell apart via the internet. Oh, he's digging himself out of this yeah, hole. Yeah, yeah. Oh, did we get out of that, Pete? <laughs> <laughs> Do that. Just to point out that um, where Steve put the super glue in, there is no marking on the wood. No. Yeah, good trick that. <laughs> Hodgepodge says, um, Martin, I think you've got to eat Mark's hat. I think you're fine. I said, if that's Sycamore, I'll eat Mark's hat. Okay. I think we have to go back and check. Yeah, I don't really want to send you my hat because I like this one. <laughs> I, I like my hat as well, which is why I said your hat and not mine. Yeah. <laughs> but so long as I can put it in a pasty. All right. Thanks. Yorkshire Griddle. Just give it a nice finish. Say it twice more and he'll turn up. Yorkshire grit, Yorkshire grit. He won't turn up as quickly as he used to because he's broken his car. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he'll be in now if he heard that. <laughs> Paul Gavin says it. If Martin has to eat the hat, should he put cream or jam on first? <laughs> 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 Cream, definitely. Caitlin's asking, "Who's got snow? Anyone got? Anyone in the chat got snow?" Yeah. Very little. Very little. We got a, a slight covering yesterday, and it's nearly all gone. Oh, oh! Jules just said that Glenn is clapping in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Glenn. Hi, Joe. We had snow here in Butte last weekend. We usually say down here, if we get snow, then the rest of the world is doomed. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, well, the rest of the world has been doomed since God only knows. March last year, yeah. We'll be all right now. We've got this super vaccine. You'll be all right. I hope so. There was a there was a post in one of the Facebook pages I follow called Hampshire Live that was asking the question: Are you happy that the army might be getting involved with the vaccination program? And they're a dreadful page for clickbait. And all I could think of to write on there is say, "Well, vets are good with needles." <laughs> <laughs> just grab everybody by the scruff of the neck, scruff of the neck, stick it in, and send them on their way. I used to do it like I used to do it like when we used at school and you had the old TB jab. All in the queue, mm. just walk down the queue. To tell you the yeah. truth, I am actually I'm very from what you're seeing there, Martin. I am very surprised that they haven't included vets. I really am. Really, I just said it very facetiously, but you might actually have a point. Well, vets are better trained than doctors, aren't they? They train for longer. Yeah, well, they've got more. They've got more species to deal with. I don't know. You met some of the people from Norfolk. Phil <laughs> <laughs> Bolt is good at darts. If that helps. <laughs> <laughs> Terry says, says, Terry says and and dentists and as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mike, you hobby hobbywood turner says that's because they haven't done all the HR training. And well, Mike, if if a vet was holding a big needle and told me to sit, I probably would. <laughs> yeah. So, so long as they rub my tummy and call me a good boy as well, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> and you get your sticker at the end of it. Yeah. yeah. I, I think they'd have to be giving me proper biscuits instead of dog biscuits, though. 
<laughs> yeah, they're a bit dry dog biscuits, aren't they? Right, so I'm Apparently. going to give us a coat of uh, Hampshire Sheen finishing wax. Yeah, Brent, you're not wrong there. <clears throat> put a vaccine in beer. <coughs> yeah, somebody posted that last week. Yeah. Pete says many diabetics are good with injecting too. It isn't hard to do, especially when stabbing someone else. Yeah, that's true. I can speak from experience with that. Yep. All right. Let that soak in for a second or two. What's the one I saw? Somebody said they should give all the Amazon drivers the vaccine to give to people because yeah. then everybody would be vaccinated by Saturday. And if you had <laughs> Amazon Prime, it would be by Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. It's right until they leave it on your doorstep. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry you weren't in. Yeah. <laughs> we could leave it in a safe place. We vaccinated yeah, your neighbour instead. <laughs> Yeah, the cat was sat on the doorstep. We've we've done the cat. Yeah, if it was DPD, it would be on somebody else's doorstep. <laughs> or yodel. Terry says, "My wife is a nurse, and she would love to stab me with a needle, with just a needle." <laughs> Oh, Andy H has got to go. See you, Andy. See you later, Andy. Thanks for coming over. Joking aside, says Mike, you, uh, Amazon, etc., could provide the logistics. It's not. That's really not a bad idea. Yeah, but, well, the yeah, I've got the army in doing the logistics. Hmm. Yeah, they're not bad at moving lots of stuff around, are they? No, they're not. They've been doing it for long enough. The RAF's pretty good at it too, just saying. Nah. Oh, you were you in Air Force, Mark? I was, yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, he was a rock hip. <laughs> <laughs> My next door neighbor was a rock ape. Dying breed. Oh, what, in Gibraltar. But that's where no. it's sort of where it originated. No. But yeah, uh, uh, RAF soldier regiment, that's RAF regiment. Oh, oh, one of them. You know the only yeah. RAF they they give a gun to. Oh. <laughs> Bite your tongues. <laughs> the only difference between RAF pilots and RAF regiment is that RAF pilots. A uh, bunk in a four-star hotel. An area of regiment bunk in the premier. Very <laughs> 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 is true. Oh, actually, it is. Right, that's so, good. Uh, yeah, so, Martin, what was that? I failed my medical for the air force. They wouldn't let me in. Oh. Bad knees. Sorry to hear that. I was the same well. for the army. <laughs> Thing is, though, when you get... I, know, I don't know about how old you was, Mark. The bloody took me. <laughs> I, was, um, I was 15 yep. and a half when I went to sign up for the army. And uh, yeah. you have your... You have, you, you have your mindset on it, what you're going to do, where you want to go, the regiment you want to go in. And then when you yeah. go to that medical and they go, no, sorry, you've got a bad back, you, the bottom just falls out of your world, doesn't it? It's like, well, what am I going to do now? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. So, I mean, I, I, I was very young and I was very hot-headed. And if I couldn't fly, I wasn't interested. So I didn't bother. I became a travel agent instead. 
Well, at least you got the fly. Well, yeah, occasionally. Although I did have a very nice 10 days uh, ten days in Zimbabwe, <laughs> Zambia and Botswana. Compliments oh, thank you. Zimbabwe, you're all welcome. <laughs> What's that? Because it's the nice. So that's said? because that's because national service was compulsory and medicals weren't a thing in the 1800s. <laughs> is that a bit of karma there, Wayne? Well, no, you see, the thing is, he's totally wrong there anyway, because in the 1800s, we didn't have a national army. We had local regiments. We didn't Roman have a soldiers. national army in the 1800s. That dude, it's got no shine on it. I know about these things. <laughs> he was there. <laughs> so I just need to polish that a little bit out of there. Of course, like now. All right. <clears throat> Other camera. Which one do you want over here? Main. That one. See all the mess now? Yeah. There there we go. Go. Yeah, nicely, nicely. Just Very see nice. the just see the bronze in there. Yeah. The grain. Very nice too. Yeah. <laughs> Very well done, Steve. Thank yeah. you very much. Very well Thank done, you. Martin. Thank you for your help, Martin. You're welcome, Steve. Same time next week. <laughs> 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 All right, let's bring you guys back in for a little bit. Oh, sorted. Lovely job. Very nice. I was must have been, I was a little bit worried about that when that broke out, but that's you can hardly see where that's glued in there, so I still think you've got one more cut in the bottom of it. Yeah, well, I'll take, I'll take your, I'll send you one, man. I'll send it down. You can finish it off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome! Lovely job. So, did you put your um promotion in, Martin? Or you? I yeah, did. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to do it again. Yeah, do it again, mate. Chuck it in. Yeah, all right. Phil, uh, Steve, Steve, yeah. Phil, Phil is asking about the tour of the new cupboards. The tour of the new cupboards. Um, okay, hang on. There you go, Martin. Oh, no, not that one. <gasps> no, not that one. <laughs> no, not that one. <laughs> no, not that one. <laughs> get rid of it. Quick, get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll have to move. Hang on, let me just move this, this monitor out. Because, hang on, yeah, whatever. Um, hang on, let me see if I can get a better camera angle. <laughs> We'll have 30,000. No, that was, the other one was better. We'll have, 30, we'll, have, we'll have 100 people asking to come in the chat. So basically I had um, a small unit up here and a shelf and a small rack. Not I made this one here, which my gouges are in. So because Mark, the gentleman would have bullied me into buying some new gouges. Um, I did nothing of <laughs> He said, if you want to be a professional, then you need to buy some decent gouges. Hello? Martin's gone. Oh, he's oh, no, just gonna... oh. I'm just having a sneaky vape. Yeah. So um, so I decided I wanted one massive cupboard rather than several individual bits. I thought I'd have one unit. So um, I built a section like the rack, but slightly larger for the new gouges and my original gouges because I never had room for my Robert Sorby gouges. So I put I used to have them laid on the bed. So they're now in there, and obviously my originals, some finishes up there, and then in the cupboard here, I've got my waxes and my Yorkshire grit, um, some more Hampshire sheen products, the the metal, whatever they call what they called, metal in brass powder, yeah, the powders that I haven't even tried yet, which I'm going to, obviously the nothing in there, the yeah. So and then um, basically. Some more finishes and some colours in there. Light switches for all my different lights. And That's the extractor. Right hey? That's the right link. <laughs> that is, that, yeah, thank you, um, and then I've got a main switch from an extractor because my extractor's turned on all the time. I've just got to break a switch here 
to so I ain't got to keep going there switching I just turn it on and off there and then I made this just for all my jaws and all my different uh, live centers and other bits and bobs and my finishing tool so other than that basically just tidy things up to make it a little bit more behind cupboards so you can't see all the crud basically but no I'm, I'm really pleased just a shame about the salmon pink doors but other than that it's all right but I will change them to red but other than that and I've, I've put my web sorry See, they look orange to me. Uh, they're salmon pink. They look more salmon pink than they are red, but, but, um, be right. but I've also now put up my, my HD um, web um, camcorders back up because uh, when I do videos, which I'm going to try and do a few more videos this year, um, I don't feel that the webcams give me a really good picture. So I've put my um, permanently fixed my, uh, camcorder there and I've got another one there. So they should, I can record now rather than using the webcams. So the reason I didn't use them before is because that was a pain in the back. So I keep changing them. So now they're fixed, solid, ready to go. So that's a lot, a lot less hassle. So that's it. Basically nothing flash, nothing fancy, just something to make life a little bit easier. Looks good. good. Yep. Just need some more tools now to fill it. <laughs> As always. <laughs> Don't blame me for that. I'm going to blame you. Nick will, Nick will let you get away with it. She won't let me get away with it. Oh, that's true. She likes me. <laughs> so don't forget, guys, you need to go over and check out Martin's Compo, or competition, should I say, on his channel, or on his uh, shop, sorry. Uh, is yeah. it the wood the wood turning shop? Yeah, the woodturningshop.com. Yeah. yeah. Go over there, and you'll find a link for his competition. An amazing prize. Absolutely amazing yeah. prize. So... One lucky winner is going to walk away with a nice, well, basically every colour and product you could ever think of. <laughs> yeah, everything. <clears throat> so uh, go over there. And when's that finished, Martin? Next week? Um, yeah, if you, if um, if there are any UK, well, England, Scotland and Wales turners in, um, yeah, head over to the woodturningshop.com. You can enter a free giveaway to win one of everything that Hamp Machine makes and a heap of other goodies too um and the whole the total prize package is worth just under 600 quid oh and there's an hour's finishing tuition with me included uh as well and that that's a that's a remote remote tuition so you get an hour uh, an hour's tuition with me as well very worth Excellent. it and like i say while you're over there go and shop and buy something as well <laughs> yeah um you do get you you do get a discount code um just for entering and the draw, well, the closing date is the 15th of January at midday. So that's a week today. And then the draw is at 7 p.m. next Friday night on uh, the Wood Turning Shop Facebook page. Thank you, Steve. No, you're more than welcome. Thank you very Lewis much for in. coming in, Martin. Oh, Lewis, quite Hi, Lewis. He says, sorry, work's been keeping him busy. Couldn't watch until now. That's right, mate. So don't forget, guys, next Friday we have the battle, the return of the back of, Battle of the Makers. That'll be the first one of the year. Oh, um, Wayne, <laughs> Wayne, you've got to pull your trousers up, mate. You'll be, you know, you're, you're equal. Yeah, the minute. I know. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to start Googling stuff again. <laughs> I better start writing some more questions. We are into a new year, so I might have a smiley face on. Oh, I wouldn't, no, I'm not going to hold my breath. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got um the first one of the year that'll be next friday at quarter to eight and uh hopefully well we'll see whether the Quandike is it the gold hunters or the wood wizards pull it warriors sorry wood warriors pull it back we'll see time we will tell see. We'll see. so that'll be next friday we'll be here there'll be myself mark wayne huey lionheart and uh, Lewis from Quandike Craftsman and Scott the Blue Light Turner. So we will all be here to try and entertain you for all the questions. And uh, we've actually got a few changes. So you guys oh, can't good. cheat. So you can't cheat in the chat. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> all, all will be revealed. All will be revealed. So, yeah, come over next Friday and I'll put a link <laughs> up for it and I'll put a promo video up for it. So hopefully you guys can... Um, Come over and enjoy. Indulge us. Oh, sorry, I am here. No, sorry. <laughs> you don't have to right. take. You don't have to turn your camera off to vape, Martin. None of the rest of us do. I, I, I don't like it. It's for, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we'll call it. 
a massive thank you to Martin for coming over tonight and joining us. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure, mate. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's a right. I, I really am really grateful for you to come over. I know your time's you're busy and your time is precious, but I really do yeah, appreciate it. And um, it very much. if you're up for it, we'll perhaps have you on later on in the year if you if you're not busy. Yeah, I'd like that. Yeah, we'll give you a, yeah. later Who on knows, in the year. Who knows what's going to happen this Can year? I but no. You what, mate? <laughs> what's that? What did he say? No, I don't know about that. <laughs> what about me? <laughs> well, you you just like part of the furniture, Mark. <laughs> All right. Thanks. <laughs> well, no, yeah, it, but... it, it'll be a pleasure to come back, Steve. And uh, thank you to Mark and Wayne for your company as well doing the e-worming thing. I appreciate no, it. No, that's fine. It's like I said right at the start, it's all, about having, it's all about having a bit of fun and a laugh. That's what it's about. So, we'll kill it, shall we? Yeah. Right then, right then guys. So, obviously, um, live tomorrow. Who's on tomorrow, Mark? Rob CP. Rob CP at lunchtime. Um, um, Nick's on at 8 o'clock. I think, I think there might be die, die proud. Six o'clock, I think. Oh, die, die, dies on. Okay. So then Sunday lunchtime will be me and Nick. Um, then uh, Hodgepodge normally has a premiere on a Sunday afternoon, doesn't he? Six, Six o'clock, o'clock on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Nick, uh, Nick is international podcast at nine thirty. JP. JP is JP's doing a, a premiere at eleven. Uh, young Caitlin will have a premiere at quarter past eleven Sunday night. Deal, I'm, I'm a deal. I'm not too sure. Deal was talking about putting out a uh, pop up live, before, yeah, pop up, um, yeah, pop up live or a premiere or something like that before the podcast on Sunday okay. evening. We'll wait and see on that one. That one's not confirmed yet. Okay, Dale, uh, Emma's just uh, Keith has just put the Emma's on tomorrow night as well. All right. Emma, so uh, Emma's on tomorrow night, and then obviously uh, we'll be back with Wayne on Monday not lunchtime, and Mark. Yeah, Mon- Mon- Wayne, Mond- uh, sorry, Wayne. Yeah, me Monday Monday lunchtime as per usual, and I'm and Monday night. Monday night. Have you got any, Have you got any lives coming up, Martin? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just keep an eye yeah. out for Martin's lives. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've, I've got a few things that I'm plodding around in my head, but I'll be doing some lives on my own channel, but also some stuff, some live stuff on, on uh, where Les and I are looking at particular tools and particular techniques through the wood turning shop, and they'll be live on our Facebook page. I think the first one's next week, but that's during the cool. day. It's not, an, it's not an evening thing. So that'll be at some point during the day, Thursday. Next week, I think. Okay. Okay. Well, just keep your eye out for it, guys. I'll let everybody know, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to go. Thank you very much to all the new people coming over today. And I uh, hope you enjoyed what you see. Everybody. And maybe we'll, hopefully we'll see you on the next one. So, anyway, guys, have a great weekend. Take care. Speak to you soon. Thanks, everybody. And bye for now. Bye for now. Thank Thanks, you. Everybody. Bye, everyone.